Welcome to the Jungle Bengals fans, I'm Kyle Phelps and uh, that was interesting. The Bengals finalized their 2023 NFL draft class over the weekend and we're going to go ahead and break that all down today. I definitely have some thoughts, I guess, about the draft class, but ultimately I want to make it clear that I'm just some dude who's sitting in, you know, a, a home-built studio uh, on YouTube. I make no claim to know about these prospects better than any NFL team or professional scout. Um, that said, I'm not your local asshole at the bar with a beer gut and a billion opinions either, right? Even if they lose this they game. They lost! Those losers! No, no, no. The game's not over. Woo! Not over! Seriously, I don't even spend that much time at bars, guys. But seriously, I, I do take the time to do the research and craft what I hope are well thought out and well researched opinions. So today, I'm going to give you my opinion on these draft picks, but I also think that regardless of what I think, Duke Tobin and specifically Lou Anarumo have earned the benefit of the doubt at this point. But before we get into that, I'd just like to ask that you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. It really helps my channel grow and it helps you know when I drop all of my content. First up, we've got the Bengals 28th overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. Miles Murphy, edge defender from Clemson. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I absolutely loved this pick. Like, I, I loved it. In fact, you can go watch my reaction video after you're done with this. Because, trust me, I am geeking about this pick. And it's not because Edge is the Bengals' biggest need or Miles Murphy was my personal number one target in this draft class or anything like that. It's because literally in no universe throughout this entire draft process until like maybe 10 picks before the Bengals were on the board did I think that Miles Murphy would even make it to 28. Guys, there was a time during this draft cycle where he was considered a top 10 talent. From what I can tell, his drop mainly happened because his absolutely dominant 2021 season was followed up by like a pretty good but not great 2022. That and he didn't exactly wow at the combine. Like personally, I, I don't I don't really care about the combine. Like I do, but like not when you have great tape saying that the combine is is dumb, right? I get the production argument, I really do, but at the same time you could make the same argument for a lot of other guys who ended up being successful at the NFL level. One guy for me who comes to mind, uh, who I also think is actually a good comp for Murphy, is Jadeveon Clowney. His 2012 season with the Gamecocks was absolutely legendary, and then he didn't do nearly as much in 2013. The Texans still ended up taking him with the first overall pick. Now, you, you could make the argument that Clowney didn't quite live up to his number one overall hype, but if you're getting Jadeveon Clowney at 28, I'm there every single time. Every single time. This pick is an A++++++++ plus 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 for me. And you cannot convince me otherwise. It was an amazing pick, and I know there were more pressing needs than Edge, but I don't care. Murphy's special. Now, day two was a little bit more confusing for me. I, I didn't have a huge problem with it, but the Bengals selected Michigan cornerback DJ Turner in the second round and Alabama safety Jordan Battle in the third. So... I see that Lou Anarumo had Duke Tobin's balls in a vice grip this year because this was this was his draft easily. Him and Darren Simmons, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But I absolutely love the value that the Bengals got with Turner. To be clear, talent-wise, he probably should have gone a lot higher in this draft. I absolutely think that he's more talented and should have gone ahead of guys like Jartavius Martin, Julius Brents, and Tyreek Stevenson, for sure. The way this draft fell, I would have expected him to be gone by the early second round, if not potentially late in the first. My only concern is that I don't exactly see how he specifically fits with the Bengals' vision, right? Like, he's definitely a smaller guy, so he's vulnerable to a very physical style of play like we have in the AFC North. So I have concerns about him playing there. But I definitely think that his talent alone is worth a shot at 60, so I'm gonna give this one a B plus for now. And, you know, we'll see if it improves later on. Then there's Jordan Battle, who I appear to be on the minority on this one, so I'll just make that disclaimer right now. But I personally had a fourth round grade on him. It also didn't help watching the Bengals trade down with Darnell Washington right there on the board in the third round. Like, the value was tremendous, guys. Come on. And... It's one thing for the Bengals to have their concerns about, you know, like, you know, potential injury issues as every other NFL team seemed to be, which has got to be why he fell that far. 
And also, the Bengals appear to have a very defensive uh, philosophy in the draft this year. But damn it, man, he ended up going to the Steelers, and that sucked to watch. That just that was awful. I hated that. I've done a bit more research on Battle post draft. And the more I read up on him, the more I do see the Bengals' vision here. It's definitely good for, you know, to have insurance for Nick Scott and Dax Hill. But, damn, that third round was painful to watch in the moment, you know? Uh, I wanted to give this one an F at the time because I was very emotional about the pick. But, uh, upon further reflection, I'll give it a C for we'll fucking C. On day three, though, man, I, I personally, I thought the Bengals' fourth round pick was mwah, Absolute home run smacked out of the park. Charlie Jones at 131 might have been a bit of a reach, to be fair, you know. But I also get them wanting to make sure that they got their guy at that position with Tyler Boyd on the last year of his deal. Jones could potentially be a solid backup plan if Boyd decides to move on to higher paying pastures. But the real reason I'm so excited about this pick, guys, is the fact that Charlie Jones is arguably the best kick returner in the entire draft, guys. Special teams was a big emphasis in the draft this year, obviously, and I think it was Darren Simmons pounding the table for the Bengals to finally invest in this position. And then there's the fact that he absolutely torched Joey Porter Jr. as a wide receiver in college. I, I doubt they're going to line up against each other in the NFL because Joey Porter Jr. is going to play on the outside and, and he'll most likely be a slot type of guy. But, you know, it's still a fun stat. Either way, this one's another A-plus pick, and that's, that's the end of the discussion. The Bengals finally addressed the running back position in the fifth round, which was probably the right time to do it, honestly. Now, the, the Kentucky fan of me is a little sad that the C-Rod dream is dead, right? But Chase Brown has more talent, like, I'm, I won't lie. He had a big fumbling issue in college, uh, so that's a big reason why he wasn't drafted higher, but he's an extremely dynamic and explosive runner. If you can solve those fumbling issues, you've got yourself an absolute steal here. Not to mention, despite being 5'9", 209, he's actually quite a talented blocker, which the Bengals desperately needed to upgrade in their running back room. Basically, they got a smaller Samaj P. Ryan replacement, right? So as long as he doesn't get blown to hell and back in the backfield, which, I mean, is a distinct possibility at his size, he can make a really nice impact for the Bengals. I'm not 100% in love with this pick by any means, but I think the value is incredible and I do like the fact that they addressed a pretty major hole here that was a big reason why I didn't give them a higher grade on my free agency grades. So I'm going to call this one an A-. Now the sixth round was uh, interesting. Andre Iosevis, the wide receiver from Princeton, I mean, he's a big boy, you know, I'll, I'll say that. He's 6'3", 205 pounds, decent blocker, I mean like... No, nobody agrees with me on this, and I'm not 100% serious when I'm saying this, but I feel like you could put a few extra pounds on him and convert him to a very small tight end. But either way, it's probably a decent backup type situation for T. Higgins, but I'm not going to lie, I was a little underwhelmed by this pick. I was definitely getting like Josh Malone vibes from this pick. So I'm going to give it a C. Again, we'll see. But then they made the single most critical pick of the entire draft with their extra sixth rounder that they got from the trade with the Kansas City Chiefs, baby. That'd be Michigan punter Brad Robbins. This guy is allergic to punting in the end zone, all right? Like, well, he doesn't have the strongest leg in the world. Like, he ain't gonna be bailing you out when you didn't get anything done and you finished your drive at your own 10-yard line. This guy is accurate, and he will pin you inside the 20. He did it a bunch in college. So you got a kick returner in Jones earlier. You got Turner, who, from what I understand, is a really good gunner. And then Evan McPherson from a few drafts ago. The Bengals finally seem to have given Darren Simmons what he's always wanted. And that's some investment in the special teams. I'm definitely joking about punter being the most critical pick of the draft, but I'm legit hyped that the Bengals finally addressed these positions. It's another A-plus for me for this pick. Mostly because I, I saw the 49ers take a kicker in the third round, and at least we waited until the sixth. Finally, the Bengals rounded things out with another cornerback named DJ in Miami's DJ Ivy. Now, if, if you all know who this guy is, I wouldn't be terribly shocked. I had no idea who this guy was going into the draft. And I, for the most part, I couldn't really find any draft profile information on him. Nobody really seemed to have any information on him. From what I can tell, there were scouts like Dane Brugler and Tony Pauline who definitely did not think very highly of him. But people generally seem to think that he has 
plenty of athletic potential, even though he had the second lowest relative athletic score of the entire draft class. But from what I can tell, it looks like he did pretty decently in college, according to his pro football focus grades. And it's not like Miami is playing against Mac opponents all the time. So I definitely feel like the Bengals going for a guy who takes a few boxes that they don't actually expect to make their roster is, is fine in the seventh round, you know? I mean, like, personally, I would have rather taken uh, Texas defensive tackle Moro Ajomo, but, I mean, what do I know, seriously? Lou seems to know what he's doing, and he's getting paid the big bucks to make these decisions. So, I'll give this one a C-, minus. but honestly, literally, who cares at this point, right? So, if you're treating it like GPA and you average out all those grades, the Bengals overall get about a B-plus from me, just like they did in free agency, right? I would have liked to see some extra emphasis on tight end, personally, but on the whole, I think the Bengals did really well this year. They seem like they're continuing to follow a philosophy that has worked out quite well for them over the last few years. Going forward, it looks like they're planning to pay for great offense, with guys like Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins needing new contracts soon. So they're not going to have as much money for defensive guys, and then I think the philosophy is just to fill that up with draftees, right? So let me know y'all's grades in the comments below, and I'll feature the best ones in my next video, like this one from Rich G, who, by the way, has been on a roll with his comments lately. He's been in, like, the vast majority of my videos in recent weeks. But he said, It's not a sexy pick, but I like it. A lot of fans disappointed in not taking Mayer. I feel in the long run, this is the better pick. I was hoping Forbes would be around, but that's how it goes. And I... Mostly agree with you, Rich, right? I I wasn't necessarily super into Emmanuel Forbes. Um, I would have been happy with Mayer. But as I said earlier, Murphy could be the next clowny. And at pick 28, that could be an incredible pick for this team specifically, which really, the, mostly what we need with Edge is just somebody who can come in and make an impact here and there. We don't need... Uh, we got Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard. We don't need, like, the guy at defensive end right now. Right? So, Jadeveon Clowney, except 23, is perfect. But I also know there were some people out there that didn't like this pick. So, either way, I'm really excited to see what the Bengals are going to do this year with all of the new talent that they put on the team. Until then, y'all can always catch more of what I do at KylePhelps92 on Twitter, Facebook.com slash ThePhelps, Butt Fumble Sports, the Battle of Ohio podcast on the Spot Pod Network, and right here if you subscribe. Let me know how y'all are feeling. I'll leave y'all, as always, with a hootie!